there's a Florida most have never seen until now. This is a fish of a lifetime. My name is Chad Crawford. I'm an adventure seeker and a lover of all things Florida. My mission? To show you how to experience authentic Florida. And we'll be tasting and savoring some of the best flavors Florida has to offer. I'm about to eat some of the best seafood in the world. So sit back. Oh yeah. As we show you how to do Florida. On this episode of How to Do Florida, Chad is heading down to the Paradise Coast to explore the Everglades. There is a, a spirit about this place. It's hard to describe. This river of grass boasts a wide range of camping and fishing opportunities if you have the right know-how and guidance. There's a lot to see and a lot to learn. And the historical record to be found in this part of the Sunshine State is pretty spectacular, too. To find pottery of another civilization, that's pretty mind-boggling. So grab your camping and fishing gear and don't forget the history books, folks. Hey, it's time to do Florida. I'm heading to Paradise Coast, which includes the areas of Naples, Marco Island, and the Everglades, located on Florida's southwest coast. It's where the Gulf of Mexico meets the Everglades, creating a diverse wonderland of things to do and see. In past seasons, I've gone spear fishing on an artificial reef in the Gulf. Mangrove snapper. Waded through Big Cypress Preserve, hauling a 30-pound camera for famed photographer Clyde Butcher. There's nothing portable about this, right? I mean, well, yeah, it is. You have someone carrying it. And the food here? <laughs> wow. I've enjoyed some meals here I'll never forget. From catch and cook snapper tacos at Hyatt House. I mean, this is just beautiful. To eating fish wings at the deck at 560. Oh, man, just falls off the bone. So good. This area has some of the most innovative culinary offerings in our state. Well, for this episode, I'm leaving the comforts of civilized society. Nothing will give you house envy like taking a river cruise here in Naples. And heading deep into the Everglades National Park. The Everglades is not only home to exotic wildlife species, but also some of the most primitive camping opportunities Florida serves up. I'm about to embark on a two-day camping expedition on a remote island deep in the Everglades. Oh man, this should be fun. My point of entry into the park would be the small town of Chukaluski, population 244, mainly comprised of fishermen and agricultural workers. This town is the perfect place to stock up and set out on an Everglades adventure. The 10,000 Islands is rich in cultural history, rich in wildlife, and also rich in that it's an area where our scientists are studying a lot of the effects that are going on in our environment. Everglades National Park is 1.5 million acres, makes us the third largest national park in the lower 48 states. My first course of action will be to find camp. My guide gave me the option of meeting him at the dock, but I figured that would be a little too easy. Getting there would be part of the fun. I'll be fully immersed in the sights and sounds and history of this environmental treasure. The Everglades. Now this being my first primitive camping experience in the Glades, I've asked Don McCumber and his team from Everglades Area Tours to help guide me on this adventure. We take people on boating trips into the 10,000 islands of Everglades National Park. We do multiple day camping trips. We also have tours that go into the interior of the Everglades and the areas where the alligators are. My goal is to learn as much as I can from these expert guides. But I think my first lesson has already begun. Well, we're in the 10,000 islands in the Everglades, absolutely spectacular, uh, but we're lost. It's tough to navigate out here. I mean, they call this the 10,000 islands for a reason. They're all looking the same right about now. Well, Chad's running a bit late. I hope he's not lost. Oh, raccoon right there. Let me ask him. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Hey, excuse me, sir. Is, do you know where Don is? You look local. Campsite tents. Uh, camping area. Uh, Wi-Fi signal out here is dead and stinking. Right so you here. definitely want to make sure you have a good old-fashioned analog map. Wait a minute. This is my Pensacola map. Don! Hey, Chad! There you are! 
<laughs> I found you. Were you lost? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Everglades. Oh, man. I, lesson number one, know where the heck you are. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it looks like you've been doing some light reading. <laughs> yeah, that's. these are all my books, man. I've read Very every one nice. of these. I've been dreaming about this trip. Well, I'll take this up to camp. All right. We got the tents all set up over here. Got a couple of kayaks so we can paddle around. For Chad's trip, uh, we are providing all of the camping gear, the tent, the sleeping bag, pads, pillows. These guys do it so nice. And Don has set everything up. I will be preparing the meals, and I'll even do the cleanup. Very, very nice, Don. We try to make it easy. <laughs> uh -huh. This is one of my shark rods, Evening's Entertainment. You got the bell up there, a little audible. Yes, Yeah. all right. I'm ready to learn everything that you've learned over the last 30 years in two days. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> the remoteness of these campsites having the right gear, navigating the maze of channels and creeks that make up the 10,000 islands, well, these are all good reasons to hire a guide, especially if you're new to this area. Up next, Chad tries to entice a monster of the deep to pay him a shoreline visit with some nocturnal beach fishing. There is something out there. It just has to get on the hook. I'm deep in the Everglades National Park on a two-day primitive camping trip with guide and master naturalist Don McCumbering. Hey, Chad, your ride's here. <laughs> now you are we're going talking, to have sir. a great time. I'll be right back. All right. Don has not only set up our camp, but he's arranged for a doing? fishing guide to pick me up. Right Captain Charles like Wright is right taking here. me out like for some backcountry right. fishing. Right. One of the things I'd like Chad to learn is, is about the biodiversity of this area. All right, sir, take me fishing. Let's go. Let's do it. We're going to head out today and see what we can find. Uh, we're coming off a cold front today, so it's a little chilly. Hopefully there'll be some birds diving and maybe some fish striking on the surface. We're going to use what we can see visually as a spot fish and hopefully catch some. Captain, there's so many areas to fish here. I mean, where do you begin? I tell people to begin is with a dart. Get a chart, throw the dart in a chart, yeah. and assume there's fish around that dart. You got two and a half million acres here to play with. Wow. Pick a spot and learn it and spread out from there. Because your assumption is there's fish everywhere. There's fish everywhere. So we just rolled up on the spot that had a lot of birds on it. And birds are a good indicator that they're feeding on something. There's some kind of bait in the water. Oh, there he is. There we go. Now we're talking. That is a Jack Carvel. Look at that. All right. Well, that's what was schooling on this little bait here. And uh, he's talking to us because he wants me to put him back in the water. I'm making a TV show here, OK? Just give me, give me a few minutes. OK, I'm done. This place looks so wild and so fishy. You know, every cast, there's an expectation. You know, like, what is out there? What could be grabbing my lure? Well, you never know. Right I mean, in this little pass, you can catch the jacks of dun, ladyfish, trout. Yeah. Bluefish, blue runners, Spanish mackerel, tarpon, snook, redfish. I mean, the, the biodiversity of this area, Captain, is just, it's just profound, isn't it? Well, you're in uh, Everglades National Park, and it is the only national park unit that was created because of its ecological and biological diversity. There's seven unique ecotones that, that make up the Everglades. Wow. Within the mangroves, there's over 400 species of fish that have been identified. And you're about to pull one of them in right now. Pull one in. This is like a ladyfish. Being schooled by someone who spent their entire adult life in the glades was priceless. If you look at the point, the water starts is calm and it's kind of breaking. Yeah. You go shallow, it's dropping off right in there. That's where they were. The stories, the knowledge, the sun free falling into the Gulf of Mexico signaled it was time to start heading back. Got that sun's dropping. What do you it say? Is. One more cast? It is. Make it a good one. There we go. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> One last cast. Happens every time. I love pulling a ladyfish in the boat green. Captains love that. Oh, yeah. That. He flops all over the boat. Look at that sucker. Last cast. Ha <laughs> ha, get away. Thank you, sir. We've been a few rods and uh, watched the sun go down. Thank you. It's a great time. I appreciate it. Time to head back to camp and set up for the evening's festivities. 
Okay, so now's the part of the evening I've been really looking forward to, shark fishing. So we've we've thrown a big uh, ladyfish head out there, and we're just gonna kind of be waiting for this thing to go off the whole time. We're gonna have a fire here in a little bit. We're gonna get something to eat. So this is just enough to kind of keep us motivated throughout the night, so I'm excited about this. So we're watching rods. That's what you do when you shark fish, you watch rods. And we've had the baits out for about 30 minutes. Oh boy, here we go. What do we got on the line now? I tell you what, something big grabbed that sucker. That was a half of a ladyfish. That was a shark. Look how clean that cut is. Okay, there's something big out there. Oh, I just ran all the way down the beach. This rod went off. And I set the hook, a giant tarp and jumped. Look at that. Whatever it was, took the hook off the braid and somehow the hook broke. That was a big, big shark hook and it's gone. Something big out there has my hook. Oh, that was exciting. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Attempt number three. There is something out there. It just has to get on the hook. Rebate. I'm determined to land a shark before calling it a night. You know, I feel like this is seen from Jaws because it's just barely ticking out my drag, <laughs> but it definitely got my attention. This shark fishing, bell ringing business has me on the edge of my seat. I am so determined to catch something. At this rate, I may not sleep at all tonight. And something just grabbed this. I don't know what this is, but it's hugging the bottom really good, like it's a stingray or something. Ooh. Could be a ray. Oh, oh it broke off. Oh, oh, it came off. Yeah, ray. <laughs> <laughs> Man, something smells good. Don's got dinner ready to go, so I better fuel up. I think I might have a long night ahead of me. What do you got going on here? Well, I have my uh, my big jet boil going on here, and uh, I have here Cajun spices. I have a mesh bag, and in that bag we have corn on the cob, we have sweet peppers, we have. Cajun sausage, we have shrimp. Everything right you there. need in a mesh bag. Everything you need right there. We're gonna take that and just lower it right into the boil, just like that. Oh yeah. And baby. let it simmer. We will have dinner in just a matter of a couple of minutes. As the fire warmed us and the clear night sky served up constellations, I sat and listened to Don tell story after story of wild adventure. One of the things about experiencing a wilderness like this is you never know what you're going to see. To really get a feel for the Everglades, you have to do what we are doing right now. Yeah. And that is to get out there and do it. Oh! Right. I got it. There we go. There we go. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, finally, we got a shark on. And he's taken out a whole lot of line before I could grab the rod. And we got a good tide, and he's using that tide. He is hauling butt towards the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, yeah. Beautiful shot. Beautiful. There he is. There he is. He don't want to come in. What a beautiful fish. Come on, right? Come on. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Beautiful fish here. We're gonna get this hook out of it. What an adrenaline rush to pull something like this out of the water. Now, if I can uh, just get this hook out and get the shark back in the water. There we go. Hook's out. We're gonna get this fish back in the water. Beautiful and strong, pure, raw muscle. Sir, thank you so much. We've been trying to get you all night. We finally got one. Let's get it back in the water. Finally, we did it. After four attempts, we brought a shark on shore. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. <laughs> the next morning, I woke to a beautiful sunrise. So I set out to explore the island. 
Early mornings are my favorite time in Florida. It's when nature is out and on full display. Good morning, Don. Chad. Oh, there bless you your heart, sir. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Life's yeah. blood. Absolutely. <laughs> and what a gorgeous, oh, gorgeous the, morning. The sunrise this morning, the colors were spectacular. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir, what are you going to teach me today? I'm going to take you to a place that is very, very special. Well, I've already been to Disney, so what else you got? <laughs> this will just knock Disney's socks off. <laughs> well, I look forward to that. Coming up. Put on your learning and kayaking caps, folks. Don and Chad take a stealthy tour through the Everglades and its rich Native American history. There's no mistaking that Pelusanian pottery. I'm looking forward to exploring more of the Everglades today and learning about the people that used to inhabit this land. But I'm not really sure where Don is taking me. Today, I'm going to take Chad kayaking to a very special place to show him some real local history. Absolutely beautiful out here, Don. It is gorgeous. So one of the most common things we hear in the Everglades is they didn't realize how beautiful it is because it doesn't have that one iconic image that you think of of a national park right away. But once you get into it, you realize that it has that inherent beauty that kind of envelops you after a visit. After a bit of paddling, we came upon an ancient midden that was created by the Calusa Indians, the coastal people that were here when the Spanish explorers arrived. What that consists of is thousands upon thousands of shells that represent thousands of meals by the Calusa Indians. I've seen mittens, but this one is huge. It kind of goes on and on here. They used these shells to build up the land. Other Calusa mounds that you find will have surf clams, quahog clams, lightning whelks, different types of conch. So the Calusa would collect the oysters, eat the oysters, and discard or place them in a pile. And over time, that pile would become high ground or a mitten as it's known today. So Don, what else could we find here? One of the things that you can find in a Calusa Indian shell mound is artifacts. And one of the artifacts is pottery. The Calusa pottery are basically these large vessels that were used for holding water and preserving foods. They may be black on the inside and will have a sandy or terracotta color on the outside. <laughs> what a history lesson. I am in awe that I am walking the same land as the Calusa did thousands of years ago. But I wanted to learn more about the culture of the Calusa Indians. There's only one place to go for that. I'm at the Marco Island History Museum to dig a little deeper into the history and culture of the Calusa Indians. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to please come out of the exhibit. I'm in the exhibit. I caught up with museum curator Austin Bell. First, I think the most mind-boggling thing is that people have been living in this area for thousands of years. I think that's largely due to the natural resources that are available to them, especially in the estuaries and the marine waters around them and the wildlife uh, that they were able to so successfully collect uh, and utilize not only for food but also for technology. What are some things we can learn from the Calusa Indians? Well, the Calusa and their ancestors were able to successfully live in harmony with nature here for thousands of years, and I think that's something we could certainly learn from. Hey, Chad, check it out and see what I found. Look at that. Oh, my god! Look at the curve. You can almost picture how large that pot must have been by that curve. I mean, Don, it's one thing to see oysters here, but to find pottery, clear evidence of another civilization, and that's pretty mind-boggling. There's a lot we can learn from the Calusa. Wow. These Indians lived in a harsh environment, but they managed to sustain life, and they did it in harmony with the environment around them. Well, Don, thank you so much, sir, for this history lesson. It's one thing to read about history. It is another thing to stand right in front of it. Sir, this is absolutely eye-opening about the people who used to live here. Thank you so much for taking me here. You're quite welcome. I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> what a treat. You know, I spent a lot of time reading books about the Everglades in preparation for this trip. But what I learned is that there's a spirit about this place that can't be found in a book. 
It's hard to describe until you come out here and experience and live it. It's in that living it that you find the essence of what the Everglades are all about. I will surely be back as we say goodbye to this sacred place. You're watching How to Do Florida. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. What an adventure. And now I get it. To fully experience the Everglades, you have to get out and do it. Well, I want to encourage you to come out here and experience this incredible natural resource for yourself. And then you'll see why this is so worth protecting for generations to come. Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. But more importantly, I hope you feel encouraged to get out and do Florida. Watch episodes of How to Do Florida and other award-winning Florida programming at discoverfloridachannel.com or search Discover Florida on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Discover Florida Channel. It's authentic Florida streaming wherever you are. Clothing and gear provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors for all for less. I love these fancy restaurants with these sustainable straws. Sustainability tastes so good. <laughs> We need to go back to loincloths, right? Is this what you and Christy are going to invest in? One of them. Oh, 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 oh. But in order for you to use a map, you kind of have to know where you are now. Well, I look forward to that.